I time dash traveled dot dot as soon as I opened my eyes, I heard a woman's condescending voice say to me, George, if you have the guts to kiss the ugliest woman here, I led you back on WeChat and let you keep simping for me. I was stunned and looked up to see her. In that instant, I froze. Holy crap. Just a glance at her, and she had a high forehead, a square jaw, and a robust, bear-like physique. The most absurd part was that she was pouting and batting her big, sparkling eyes at me like she was trying to act cute. Trembling, I asked, you want me to kiss you? Smack, a slap landed hard on my face. The man next to her snarled, how dare you? Do you think you're worthy of kissing her? In the philosophy class, the unkempt old professor John was rambling with glowing eyes. The students were drowsy, nodding off continuously. I couldn't help but think, this is so boring. Who could possibly listen to this kind of lecture? So I laid my head on the desk, letting his droning theory lull me to sleep like a lullaby. The voice faded in and out, barely making it to my ears. I only heard, in terms of value skepticism, theoretically, what is most beautiful to you can be most ugly to him. As for good and evil, the next second, I time traveled. The jeering around me grew louder and louder. George, go on, go kiss her. I opened my eyes in confusion and heard the gleeful voices around me continue. Sister Ting Ting really knows how to play, making George kiss the ugliest one. This move is genius, it's like a public execution. It humiliates her and messes with George. I opened my eyes, roughly taking in my surroundings. I found myself in a bar, neon lights flashing, around, music echoing in the air. In the southeast corner of the bar, I was sitting with a group of people in a spacious booth, with loud laughter and jeering drinking sounds all around. Before I could grasp the situation, the next second, I heard a woman's condescending voice say, to me, George, if you have the guts to kiss the ugliest woman here, I led you back on WeChat and let you keep simping for me. Looking up, that woman indeed had a high forehead, a square jaw, and a robust, bear-like physique. The most absurd part was that she was pouting, lying shyly in the arms of a man beside her, and batting her big, sparkling eyes at me like she was trying to act cute. Trembling, I asked, you want me to kiss you, smack, a slap landed hard on my face. The man next to her snarled, how dare you? Do you think you're worthy of kissing her? The woman gave me a disdainful look and followed up. Stop dreaming, look in the mirror. Do you think you're worthy? I was speechless. What kind of nonsense was this, even if everyone around cut off their noses? None could be uglier than her. And what do you mean by adding me back on WeChat and letting me simp for her? What it, huge ego. With her looks, if I had to choose between needing a pile of crap and kissing her, I immediately ask someone for a spoon. Just looking at her for another second made my eyes feel like they were going blind. The ugly woman seemed to think I didn't know who she was talking about because I hadn't moved. Her thick, three-centimeter eyebrows furrowed hard. Then she pouted toward the distance, signaling me to look over. Instinctively, I followed her gaze. In the next second, the eyes that had almost gone blind from the sight suddenly recover. Across the booth, another group of people sat. A cold and proud-looking beauty sat quietly in the main seat. Her long hair was like midnight feathers, gleaming softly under the lights. Her features were delicate and refined, with eyebrows like the new moon and eyes like autumn water. Her blue dress made her skin look even fairer, cold as ice as snow. She radiated an aura of aloofness and indifference. The moment I saw her, I felt the entire dim bar light up with her beauty. So I asked in confusion, you want me to kiss her, who else? The ugliest woman here, who else could it be but her? Maria smiled maliciously, her eyes fixed on the beauty opposite. Suddenly, I felt a bit sorry for her. Not only was she ugly, but she was also mean and had poor eyesight. Listening to the increasingly reckless jeers, I hesitated no more. This wasn't teasing me, it was clearly a benefit for me. And the people on the beauty's side had obviously heard Maria's earlier taunt about me kissing. The ugliest woman, they glared at me, telling me to get lost. I ignored them and sat right beside her. There was a strange look of humiliation flashing in her eyes. I was a bit puzzled. I'm not bad looking and have received quite a few confessions from girls at school, kissing or not. It shouldn't be that humiliating, 
right? Without thinking too much, I was about to explain. She glanced at Maria's side and spoke to me. With some grievance, I, Willa Lucia, might be ugly, but only my boyfriend can kiss me. I was dumbfounded, thinking, beauty, do you even hear yourself? You're ugly, with your looks, you could debut on the spot. And who has ever seen an ugly Willa Lucia? But that wasn't the point. My heart warmed, and I grabbed her hand, asking, do you have a boyfriend? Willow Lucia paused before saying, No. Not giving her a chance to continue. I quickly answered, Then can I be your boyfriend? Willow Lucia didn't speak, just looked at me with confusion, so I patted her hand and gave her a big smile. If you don't say anything, I'll take that as a yes. Since you're my girlfriend, can I kiss you now? Willow Lucia blushed deeply, her eyes flashing as she glared at me. It wasn't anger. It seemed more like a playful scold. She said, you'd do anything for Maria, wouldn't you? I was speechless, what was she thinking? How could she misunderstand this? But I didn't bother, explaining. I straightened up on the couch, as our eyes met, I felt my soul being drawn into her beautiful eyes. With a hint of intention, but seemingly unintentional, I kissed her lips. The soft touch of her lips was unforgettable. The rich fragrance from her body made me feel. Enchanted dot dot as I got up, her face was flushed, and she looked at me with shock, trembling as she gently covered her lips with her right hand. The onlookers all gasped. The next second, Maria's angry voice rang out. George, what are you doing? I originally wanted to continue my intimate conversation with Willow Lucia, but Maria was too nosy. I turned back impatiently, are you blind? I'm kissing my girlfriend. Willow Lucia weakly tugged at my sleeve. What followed was pure chaos. Maria tried to pull me away. Willow Lucia stopped her, and in an instant, both groups stood up, clashing with each other. I protected Willow Lucia behind me. Watching the scene unfold in bewilderment, later, I learned that the Liu family and the Shu family were mortal enemies. Maria just wanted to use me to humiliate Willow Lucia. Oh, 03. Willow Lucia and I were sitting in a car on the way back to the dorm. The legendary starlight roof made the car feel like a miniature night sky, enveloping the whole cabin in a dreamy atmosphere. Countless tiny lights flickered on the roof, as if we were surrounded by a sea of stars. However, when I turned to look at Willow Lucia, I was stunned. Her cold and delicate face, under the starlight, seemed even more refined, as if the Milky Way was flowing across her face. She felt a bit uncomfortable under my gaze and asked, Why are you staring at me? Because you're beautiful. How can you be so beautiful? As soon as I spoke, Willow Lucia's expression turned very strange. What do you mean by saying I'm beautiful? Even someone as slow as me could tell she wanted more compliments, something more specific. So I said, Yeah, yeah, you're the most beautiful in the whole school. Bright eyes, white teeth, willow brows, almond-shaped eyes, your whole face is perfectly defined. No one can resist that. She suddenly pursed her lips, looking a bit angry, and pinched my arm hard. Oh, she's just shy. Then she said, George, considering we're classmates, I won't hold it against you today. But don't push your luck. What does she mean by not holding it against me? And what does she mean by pushing my luck? Is she talking about me kissing her and asking her to be my girlfriend? Does she want to back out? I hurriedly said, I'm not joking. I really want you to be my girlfriend. Please, be with me, even if it means driving a luxury car and living in a mansion. I'm willing. Willow Lucia was amused by my words. After a while, she asked, Do you really think I'm beautiful? I nodded frantically. Isn't that obvious to anyone with eyes? She chuckled softly, a bit annoyed. Since you're my boyfriend, you can't get entangled with Maria anymore. I quickly agreed. That wasn't a hard request. I couldn't avoid Maria fast enough. When we reached the dormitory, we agreed on a time to meet tomorrow, but I didn't get out of the car. Willa Lucia asked, anything else? I glanced at the driver, who was smart enough to keep his eyes forward. I quickly pulled Willa Lucia in for a kiss. Under her shy and slightly annoyed gaze, I got out of the car. And in the car, Willa Lucia whispered as she watched my back. George, you better not be lying to me. Double quotes. As soon as I stepped into the dorm, 
A mocking voice rang out. Yo, our dorm's famous simp is back. Why are you back so early today? Don't you need to run? Errands for Maria. The speaker was David. I ignored him, washed up, and went to bed. There was no need to explain. Anything to these almost strangers, happily, I picked up my phone to ask Willa Lucia if she had gotten home. But when I opened, WeChat, I saw a friend request. It was from Maria, she, in a condescending tone, said that since. I had listened to her, she could have me back now. I sneered. I accepted Maria's friend request and, seeing typing, immediately added her to the blacklist. The next morning, my roommates were surprised to see me still in the dorm. Aren't you going to deliver breakfast to Maria today? I moved my gaze from the conversation with Willa Lucia and said, Don't mention Maria again. I have a girlfriend now. What, really? Who is she? Before I could speak, David mocked, Yeah, right. A girlfriend, everyone in school knows you're. Maria's simp, you're just playing hard to get to get her attention. I was speechless, I didn't know why, but their tone when talking about Maria was weird, making. Her seemed like some extraordinary woman, before I could ask, someone knocked on our dorm door. George, someone is looking for you downstairs. It must be Willow Lucia, she could have just told me on WeChat. I hurried downstairs, forgetting, to wear my glasses. From afar, I saw a figure in a blue dress waiting with her back to me at the entrance. I rushed over and hugged her from behind. I missed you so much last night. Crap, why did she feel so different? The next second, Maria's proud voice sounded in my embrace. George, you really are playing, hard to get. I was shocked and immediately stood up straight. Crap, wrong person. Even worse, Willow Lucia had arrived at some point and was standing nearby, having witnessed the whole scene. Maria looked at Willow Lucia provocatively and reached out to hug me again. I quickly dodged and stood next to Willow Lucia. Let me explain, this wasn't my fault. In my original world, I wasn't nearsighted, for some reason, after crossing, over. I became nearsighted but didn't have the habit of wearing glasses. So I forgot to take them. Just now, from a distance, everyone looked like blobs of color. Seeing a blue dress, I thought it was Willow Lucia, fortunately. Although Willow Lucia's face was not good, she didn't immediately turn around and leave. But before I could continue explaining, Maria's annoying voice rang out again. Explain what, George, didn't you just get close to her to make me jealous? Now that I'm here, before I get mad, make her leave. Maria's eyes held an inexplicable sense of superiority. She looked at Willow Lucia. I pulled Willow Lucia's hand and retorted, get lost. You're like a disease. I'm talking to my girlfriend. What's it to you? Students coming in and out of the dorm were watching the commotion, some pointing and whispering. Some said, he dares to stand up to the school beauty. Doesn't he feel ashamed? I wholeheartedly agreed. Justice lies in the hearts of people. Beauty is justice. Maria said with a look of disgust and surprise, George, are you crazy? You're ditching me too. Simp for her. Have you even seen how she looks? I was speechless. This ugly woman was trying to make fun of me, mocking me that I didn't deserve. Willow Lucia and only deserved her. Willow Lucia silently tightened her grip on my hand. She must be trying to comfort me. My girlfriend is so kind. Damn Maria. Willow Lucia hasn't even said anything. Who is she to make fun of me? So I said, I, George, I am a reader of Nobel Prize winning literature, a participant in billion dollar lottery projects, an applicant to Fortune 500 companies, a senior beer on major shopping platforms, and one of the best dorm mates in the male dorm. With my qualifications, how can I not deserve her? A hint of amusement flashed in Willow Lucia's eyes. Maria was in for a tough time messing with me. I continued, and you dare mock my looks. Have you looked in the mirror, your broad face? Beady eyes, flat nose, sausage lips, and protruding ears make me want to call the police just by looking at you. You should compensate me for mental distress. As soon as I finished, Maria's previously resentful face slowly turned a shade of red wit. Embarrassment, she pursed her lips and said, George, I know you like me. You don't have to praise me like that. I immediately clutched my chest and took three steps back. Too scary, I said, Ryan, 
Let's go quickly. This woman is seriously sick. I got into the car. I patted my chest with lingering fear. Maria's confidence was terrifying. Willow Lucia was messaging on her phone and snorted, saying, You promised me last night not to get entangled with Maria. That wasn't my fault. I immediately explained the whole situation before Willow Lucia could respond. I added, I know that no matter what, I made a mistake and I won't make excuses. So, as a punishment, can you let me kiss you? Willow Lucia blushed and scolded. Pervert. There was still a driver in the car, so I didn't push my luck. Willow Lucia said, I'm really angry. You can't say those things to Maria again in the future. I nodded, thinking my girlfriend was really kind. Even for someone she disliked, she couldn't bear to speak ill of them. Maria was so despicable, yet she still cared about her dignity. That's the woman I fell for. Willow Lucia had booked a private club for our meal. The environment was elegant and serene. Though the staff's appearance left something to be desired. I leaned in and whispered to her, the owner here is quite kind. Willow Lucia looked at me puzzled. I covered my mouth with my hand and whispered, I thought places like this would have certain standards for the appearance of their staff. Turns out, they're quite down to earth. Willow Lucia's eyes flashed, and she asked, do you think they're ugly? I scratched my head, thinking that they didn't rely on their looks to make a living or depend on me for that matter, so I said politely, they're just not quite my type. Then I turned the table and served Willow Lucia a piece of the newly brought squirrel fish, not noticing the thoughtful look on her face. After dinner, Willow Lucia smilingly suggested we go to her private cinema to watch a movie. I declined outright. With such a beautiful girlfriend, why would I want to go to a dark place? So I suggested we go to the mall across the street and have a good time shopping. Actually, I, I had a selfish motive. I might get to see her in some cool outfits. She hesitated for a moment after hearing my suggestion, her mouth twitching slightly and her whole body stiffening, but she agreed. She then put on a hat, sunglasses, and a mask. When I returned to the dorm, my arms were full of bags and boxes. Willow Lucia was indeed generous. Whenever I looked at something for more than a second, she would immediately buy it with her card. I had originally wanted to pick out some clothes for her, but by the time we left, but by the time we left, it seemed like she had almost bought out the entire mall. This caused me to walk with my eyes straight ahead. Yo, did you hook up with a rich woman? David sneered after glancing at the bags on my desk. Willow Lucia was indeed a rich lady, so calling her a rich woman wasn't wrong. Seeing that I wasn't speaking, David's eyes flickered. This rich woman wouldn't be Willow Lucia, would she? I heard about this morning. You even hooked up with her to get Maria's attention. I was completely puzzled, Maria, the center of the universe. Why would I want to get that unknown species' attention? I finally understood where her mysterious confidence came from, but it was strange. Maria's family was wealthy, and Willow Lucia's family wasn't lacking either. Why did they only praise Maria? I asked out loud. David's eyes widened, and he burst out laughing. George, are you out of your mind? Maria is to school beauty. How can she be compared to Willow Lucia, that ugly girl? What? What? What was he saying? Such an obscure dialect. Who is the school beauty? And who is the ugly girl? In a flash, various details in my mind connected. I pointed to my face and asked David, do you think I'm handsome or ugly? David looked at me with some disdain. Clown, all right, all right. This was actually a world with inverted aesthetics. Now I really was a clown. No wonder I always felt a sense of incongruity with Willow Lucia. The problem lay here. Knowing the truth about this world, I didn't act rashly. Under such circumstances, saying anything to Willow Lucia would sound sarcastic. But every time I looked at her face, I felt like I had struck gold, carrying a hidden treasure. Ha he, defer the end of the class, the news of me and Willow Lucia being together had spread. Everywhere, Maria called me several times from different numbers, but I didn't answer. David looked at me mockingly and said, Some people will go to any lengths, but then again, like, pot, like lid. You, with your sharp brows and high nose, definitely match with those eyes like autumn water and those luscious red lips. I couldn't help but burst out laughing. 
David, furious, yelled, What the hell are you laughing at? I tried to suppress my smile. If you're going to insult, at least do it properly. David was speechless. It rained a lot in the summer, and it started pouring soon. After I got back to the dorm, I was just messaging Willow Lucia about how lucky we were when I suddenly heard someone shouting my name from downstairs. I opened the window and looked out, instantly feeling a chill run down my spine. Holy crap, a water ghost. Was a water ghost coming to claim my life? There was a woman in a blue dress standing in the rain below. The downpour had soaked her dress, making it cling tightly to her body. Her long hair was plastered to her face and body. Her features twisted into a terrifying expression. I was scared out of my wits. Seeing me look out, she wiped her face. George, George, I admit, at that moment, I was terrified. I trembled as I asked my roommates, can you see that person downstairs? David looked out and immediately gasped. I thought he was scared too, but instead, he glared at me, full of emotion, and said, that's Maria. What a devoted girl, she's so beautiful. If only I could be her boyfriend. I was completely speechless. Sometimes I really feel like calling the police. This world with inverted aesthetics is terrifying beyond words. Seeing me retreat, Maria called my name even louder. I put in my earplugs and lay down on my bed. Rainy days and afternoon naps go perfectly. Together. David, cursing me for being heartless, grabbed an umbrella and rushed out. I don't know how he finally managed to persuade Maria to leave, but I enjoy a few days of peace. After dating for a while, I found that Willow Lucia and I were compatible in many ways. Despite her recold and distant, she was actually quite sooner when we walked together. If I looked at any of the so-called ugly girls nicknamed Skinny Monkeys by classmates for a bit too long, she would post subtle photos showing off her figure. On her moments at night, every time I praised or liked her posts, she would delete them immediately. After a few times, I got the hint. When Willow Lucia posted another photo, I casually mentioned to my roommates, Willow Lucia's recent post has quite an artistic vibe. Of course it did. She appeared to be casually leaning on the sofa with her collarbone subtly visible in her sleepwear. What? Did she post something? My roommates were confused, scrolling through their phones. Dot dot, then David suddenly said, George, you don't really think Willow Lucia is great, do you? Here we go again. What else would I think? Her eyes are so big, her nose so high, her lips so thin, and her features so defined. Besides being good at studying and hardworking, how does she compare to Maria? I think your aesthetics are messed up. Apparently, he was still standing up for Maria. I don't talk to ignorant people, so I didn't argue. You're right, from your point of view. My aesthetics are indeed abnormal. To me, Willow Lucia is a super beauty. David's eyes flashed as if he had thought of something. He immediately pulled out a few photos for me to choose from. The ones I picked as handsome or beautiful were unanimously deemed ugly by them. My roommates looked at me with pity, and I shrugged helplessly. After all, the sense of beauty varies from person to person. Maybe, like that old teacher man said, there really is no high or low in beauty and ugliness. Just like how Don Beatles think Don is the best thing in the world. I was wrong. I shouldn't have insulted dung beetles. At least dung beetles don't resort to kidnapping. Just a few hours ago, Willow Lucia and I were walking hand in hand on campus. David suddenly called, saying there was an issue with the scholarship application I submitted a few days ago and asked me to go to the counselor's office. Willow Lucia wanted to go with me, but she also received a call at that moment. After coming out of the office, I took a bottle of water from David and drank it. The next thing I knew, I woke up feeling weak, lying on a couch, not far away. Maria was talking to someone in a white coat. Doctor, he might have been stimulated by me and suddenly developed an attraction to ugliness. As long as you can cure him, I'll pay any amount. The doctor nodded and said he needed to prepare some things. Maria walked over and looked down at me. I knew you wouldn't fall for someone else for no reason. Turns out you developed a fetish for ugliness. Don't worry, I'll cure you. Once you're healed, I'll forgive you and let you stay by my sigh. I was speechless. 
How narcissistic do you have to be to think that not liking you is a disease? Maria smiled, thinking she looked very beautiful. George, I admit you successfully got my attention. You were smart this time, knowing that the person I can't stand the most is Willa Lucia. But she's just an ugly freak with some skills. Why does everyone say I'm inferior to her in everything but looks and figure? I wore a similar style too. Hers just to humiliate her. I had no words. Maybe. Just maybe. Her face is leagues ahead of yours. But now wasn't the time to argue about this. This is kidnapping. Aren't you afraid I'll call the police? Maria touched my face. It's just a treatment. Once you're cured, I'll let you go. Seeing the approaching psychiatrist, I panicked. I knew I wasn't sick, but I feared he'd give me the wrong medication. I wanted to resist, but the drug still hadn't worn off, leaving me powerless. As the hypnosis began, my consciousness started to blur. It felt like a long time had passed, but it could have only been a few minutes. Suddenly, a loud nose came from the door being kicked open. When I opened my eyes, I saw a disheveled Willow Lucia with several bodyguards standing before me. Her forehead was sweaty, and she rushed into my arms. George, are you okay? Her voice trembled slightly. I wanted to raise my hand to hug her back, but my body pushed her away uncontrollably. Then, I heard my own voice speaking. Who are you? Don't hug me. Willow Lucia's face turned pale instantly. Then my world plunged into darkness. The original George was back. I couldn't think of any other explanation. Sure enough, at night, his slightly apologetic voice sounded in my mind. Sorry to interrupt your special hobby. I was speechless. The one you were chasing was a special hobby. We reviewed the events that had happened. It turned out we had swapped bodies. When he got drunk here, he suddenly crossed over to my world. I asked how he returned. He was also puzzled saying he was knocked out while rescuing someone and somehow ended up back here. We called it a soul swap, but it was just each of us returning to our rightful place after being born, in the wrong body. Then he said, was that your girlfriend today? She was really. Say one more word and see what happens. I threatened. Nothing, nothing, she's fine. I clicked my tongue, feeling a bit short changed. With the same looks, I was considered handsome in the previous world but a clown here, so I said, from now on, I'll be George, and you'll be little George. Let's distinguish between us, why should I agree to that? Because you became a handsome guy in the past, and I became a clown here. Little Gorge chuckled, then didn't argue. We then chatted about the different aesthetic views in each world, until I got a bit sleepy. He never mentioned Maria, so I couldn't help but bring it up. Maria never realized George had changed. She just thought I was sick because of David. Little Gorge paused before talking about his past efforts to chase Maria. By our standards, Maria is indeed the school beauty. Chasing girls involves some effort, decides. Being called a simp a few times, I didn't lose anything. Feelings are voluntary, and I have no regrets. He was indeed carefree, thinking about it. I had been proactive since meeting Willow Lucia. There's nothing wrong with boldly pursuing someone you like. I thought this would be my last conversation with Little Gorge, thinking he would return the next day, but for some unknown reason. When I opened my eyes again, three months had passed, and now I seemed to be imprisoned. Without any communication devices, I couldn't figure out the situation. Fortunately, G. Boxia still had some decency and left a note on the table. I slowly unfolded it and saw two large characters written on it. Bye bye, I was speechless. It turns out people really can laugh out loud when they're extremely speechless. At that moment, I heard the doorknob turn. I warily retreated to a corner. The next second, Willow. Lucia walked in carrying a tray. After three months, her face was thinner, and her aura had changed from cold to even more unapproachable. I let out a sigh of relief and quickly walked over. Haven't you been eating well? Why have you lost so much weight? Willow Lucia hesitated and said, George. I responded, and the next second Willow Lucia threw herself into my arms. She cried. I thought you'd never come back. She said that after I woke up, I seemed different. Although I didn't explicitly break up with her, I started avoiding her in subtle ways. 
I didn't reply to her messages, didn't answer her calls, and didn't meet her when she waited downstairs. This stalemate lasted for two months, rumors began. Spreading at school, saying that I was toying with Willow Lucia's feelings for Maria, deliberately, stringing her along, she didn't believe it at first. Until she accidentally saw me, alone with Maria, saying some ambiguous things. The rain soaked her shirt, and she was heartbroken, if this were a story of misunderstandings, the next part would be her finding a better man, making me regret it. If this were a campus melodrama, it would turn into a classic love triangle where she loves him, and he loves her, but Willow Lucia to turn evil. She took the villain root and imprisoned me. Speaking of imprisonment, I looked up. Why didn't you tie me to the bed and do this and that to me? Willow Lucia looked completely confused. I later found out that after Willow Lucia imprisoned G. Boxia, he refused to say anything at first, probably holding on to the hope that he might swap back soon. So Willow Lucia locked him up and cut off the internet for two days. By the third day, G. Boxia was crying and begging for mercy. I held Willow Lucia, kissed her forehead, and said, Now that everything is explained, you can let him go. Willow Lucia lowered her eyes and didn't say anything, just hugged me tightly. Little did I know how prophetic those words would be. The next morning, half asleep, I almost tripped over the chain on my right foot while trying to go to the bathroom. I was speechless when Willow Lucia came in with fried chicken and beer. I was researching recipes on a tablet. It was the first time I'd seen her so down to earth. Seeing her approach, I quickly put the tablet aside guiltily, then I shook the chain. Aren't you going to explain this? Willow Lucia's eyes flicker, and she blushed shyly. The next second, she pressed her body against mine. She whispered, as you see, as you wish. I closed my eyes and lowered my head, trying not to let her see the expression on my face. Then, I suppressed the smile on my lips, hey. So, it's a captive play, I understand. I can do it. Imprisonment is certainly wrong. But what did Willow Lucia do wrong? She's just a beautiful, cute, and an expressive pure young lady. What could I do but forgive her, seeing that I wasn't speaking? Willow Lucia was about to say something, I pretended to be serious. And said, aren't you afraid the school will find out and call the police? The Liu family has provided internship positions to the school. Your name is on the reported list. I thought about the lines I had planned and continued. Willow Lucia, are you crazy? She seriously thought for a moment, then, for the first time, took the initiative to kiss the corner of my mouth. Yes, I'm sick. If I don't see you, I get sick. I immediately said seriously, if you're sick, you need treatment. Fortunately, I know a bit about medicine. I must treat you thoroughly. Willow Lucia lowered her head and didn't reply. I continued seriously, come over here, lift up your clothes, let me feel where the illness is. I thought the role playing would end here, but Willow Lucia said, okay. She snuggled into my arms, her fragrance making me a bit flustered. She grabbed my hand and whispered in my ear, what were you looking at on the tablet just now? Looking at, I was looking at recipes, of course. But how did she know? I was sweating profusely my face turning red from the embarrassment of being caught. Willow. Lucia chuckled softly and nuzzled my face. Then, Dr. G, please give me a thorough treatment. As a chef who has studied recipes for years, I carefully followed the instructions, the intensity, rhythm, and heat had to be just right. At first, the fit wasn't perfect, but after a little adjustment, we quickly cooked up a dish. With that, I grasped the essentials of stir-frying. As a chef with go, stamina, I started the second exploration. As theory and practice combined, we became more in sync. The sound of kitchen utensils clashing filled the room. Finally, after a rapid stir-fry on high, teat, the aroma of food filled the air. After being well-fed, she snuggled into my arms again, but my satisfaction and joe didn't last. Long before it was replaced by heartache, Willa Lucia said something that made my heart ache. She said, George, I only now feel that you love me. I was stunned, and a wave of sorrow surged in my heart. I suddenly felt I had done something wrong. I had always been easygoing, and even swapping with Chiboxia into this world of inverted 
aesthetics didn't feel real when Willa Lucia said she was ugly. I subconsciously thought she was being modest. I ignored her real feelings. I forgot that Willa Lucia truly grew up in this world. Her looks, admired by me, would receive equal amounts of disdain and hatred here. I had never considered telling her the truth, even. When she faced G. Boxia alone, Ryan, I'm sore. Before I could finish apologizing, Willow Lucia lifted her head and kissed me. Her voice trembled. Don't say it. George, you didn't wrong me. I just need to know that I wasn't loving you. Unilaterally all along, that's enough. Just that. No, it's not enough. I stopped apologizing and started telling her about G. Boxia. I should have told her earlier. I had misjudged the situation all along. Willow Lucia listened and then nestled closer into my arms. I held my breath, waiting for her to say something. After a while, she said softly, So, you fell for me at first sight. Well, that's quite direct. Seeing her turn away in a huff, I quickly said, Hey, listen to me. I didn't notice how the heavy atmosphere had lifted. In the days that followed, Willow Lucia didn't unlock my chain and I didn't bring it up. During the day, she tutored me, and at night, we cooked delicious meals together. Occasionally, when she went out, I lounged on the sofa, watching movies, playing games, and enjoying the air conditioning. Unfortunately, these good days didn't last long. Maria found her way to us. Seeing Maria sneakily appear before me, I was dumbfounded. Maria was agitated. I knew I couldn't find you anywhere. Turns out you were illegally detained. By Willow Lucia. How did you get in here? The villa had few people, but decent security. Maria looked smug. Don't worry about that. I've already called the police. Come with me before. Willow Lucia gets back. I frowned. How do you know Willow Lucia isn't here? Of course I know. I saw her. Anyway, I'm here to save you. Just come with me. Maria tried to pull my chain. Annoy. I kicked her over. George, are you crazy? I'm here to save you. I looked at her with disdain, then tucked the key from the bedside drawer and unlocked the chain. Willow Lucia never intended to imprison me. At first, it was just a game between us. Later, I wanted to give her a sense of security, to show her I wouldn't abandon her. I looked at Maria on the floor. Do you had any other business? Maria was stunned. So you and Willow Lucia are playing these games behind my back. Her face contorted with rage, and her eyes reddened. Then, she started crying. George, you weren't like this before. Her crying was so ugly that I took a sharp breath. I know you want to cry, but don't. Your immediate priority is to find a swan. Maria paused, then realized I was calling her a toe, seeing that her soft approach didn't work. She tried to drag me away forcibly. George, you used to be my simp. Do you think I care about you? I just wanted to make Willow. Lucia suffer, you were cured, that your fetish for ugliness relapsed so quickly. Maria was strong, to subdue her, I pressed her onto the bed. At that moment, Willow Lucia returned, the bedroom door was ajar, and when Willow Lucia entered, she saw me pressing Maria down, on the bed. I got nervous and quickly let go of Maria. Let me explain, it's not what it looks like. Maria sneered, George. Why are you scared? Weren't you just trying to kiss me? That's nonsense. You were the one who grabbed me. I thought Willow Lucia would be so angry that she would turn around and leave. But instead, she looked at me, walked over, and grabbed Maria's hair. Doing this in my house, do you really think I'm that stupid? Maria screamed and tried to hit Willow Lucia, but I grabbed her wrist. Just then, the police arrived. Originally, Maria had called the police to accuse Willow Lucia of illegal detention, but it backfired. Remembering the time I was taken to the psychiatric clinic, I decided to settle old and new scores together. I also reported David. Willow Lucia's lawyer said that Maria was guilty of illegal trespassing and that if we pressed charges, she would go to jail. The Shu family wanted to settle, but Willow Lucia refused. She said she could overlook past minor conflicts. But I was her bottom line, and she wouldn't tolerate this. When we left the police station, it was already dark. Thinking of what had just happened, I teased. Willow Lucia, I thought you would be so angry seeing Maria pulling on me that you would run out. 
Willow Lucia reply, you should read fewer novels, ha ha. Who was the one who got angry, and they saw G. Boxiao talking to Maria alone? Willow Lucia blush, Dan glared at me. I laughed heartily, it's great, she is Willow Lucia, the person I love. She never needs to feel inferior, later. I asked Willow Lucia where she had gone for those two days when Maria sneaked in. She fiddled with the red sandalwood bracelet on my hand and said she had gone to get this. Does it take two days to get a bracelet? I wanted to ask more. The Willow Lucia nonchalantly started opening packages, watching her. Untack various kitchen utensils and aprons. I knew we wouldn't avoid cooking a big feast tonight. Much later, I found out that the bracelet was for calming the soul. Willow Lucia was afraid I would leave again, so she went to the most spiritual temple, going at every step, to pray for it. She really is a little fool, and I, I love this little fool with all my heart.